Our ancestors, through prophecies, had said we were to travel west until we find the food that grows on water. That's why you find Ojibwe people where they are, because they're near the lakes that have the wild rice. Wherever the Nishinaabe people will live, this is the sacred food that will sustain those people. It's their responsibility to speak for the plants, the animals, trees, all of universe that's not able to speak. Shinabe people will speak for them on their behalf and they will take care of them. That's part of the prophecy that was told to our people a long time ago. We still carry that prophecy. We still carry that promise, that responsibility. Buju, to everybody, Shawnee Gijko, Kondishnikaz, Bijou and Dodame, Sakaganee and Dunjaba. When I first heard about the potential for this restoration project, it kind of hit me real hard because I would always hear my dad talk about ricing here. There's always good and bad years on Rice Lake. And he'd always say that Spur Lake was the second best lake around to Rice Lake. When I was about maybe 12 years old, I speak with my mom and dad. We'd come to Spur Lake. We'd bring my grandma and grandparents up here all the time. And they'd stay three or four days and they'd camp. We always had a good time, you know, and make a little bit of money and buy school clothes and food for our fall in winter. We really didn't have any open water like we got now because there was always rice seems like here. It was amazing. My name is Peter David. I'm a now retired wildlife biologist. I spent my career working with the Great Lakes Indian Fish and Wildlife Commission. And a good part of my duties there were as a Minoman steward or trying to take care of this precious resource. We try to keep an eye on the health of the Minoman beds throughout the ceded territory or roughly the northern third of Wisconsin. Spur Lake, once upon a time, was a tremendous wild rice lake. This was a very important lake for wild rice harvest. It's located about half an hour away from the Sakagan Reservation. It was dense with wild rice and it was consistent. And up until about 20 years ago, you could depend on that harvest. I've flown over this probably for the last 35, 36 years. And over the course of those annual flights and oftentimes ground surveys, we just watched this rice bed disappear. And that was really troubling because this is a state natural area. We don't have development. We have a small watershed that has many wetlands in it, has very little industry or agriculture even. It's a real concern. If we can't maintain rice on the landscape at a place like this, it really doesn't bode well for the future of this resource in Wisconsin. If it was a bad year here in Rice Lake and you know the harvesters want to go to Spur Lake, now that rice doesn't exist there. Our harvesters were able to use Spur Lake in the early 2000s. After that, there was just no rice at all anymore. What was going on here? What was the problem? And it really was pretty baffling. It's relatively undisturbed. It's not apparently human impacted, which is usually what's behind the, the failures or the declines that we see. But we're comparing historic records that were out there with data that the Mole Lake tribe, Chicago and Chippewa gathered. Water levels, we, we documented changes there. We saw changes in the plants themselves happening over time. As the water goes higher, the plants become spindly. Their seed production declines, and we could sort of document the changes in the density and the distribution of rice on the landscape. I was contacted by Peter David. He had observed a decline at Spur Lake in rice and had done a bit of research into the past on the lake and the historical water levels. We worked with a number of different partners to do a climate adaptation workshop, focusing on Spur Lake and especially the rice here to try and understand the threats associated with climate change. And we wanted to try and restore the site, try and make it more resilient to climate change. One of the main takeaways from our workshop was the water levels are too high on Spur Lake for rice. From what we can tell, they have gone up since probably the early 2000s. 
maybe six inches to 12 inches, which is too deep for rice. We came together as uh, the Spur Lake Working Group, multiple tribes, the DNR, Glyphwick, other agencies that had a stake in this lake. And what we did is sat down and tried to think outside the box as to what could be done to bring this lake back to its former status. We talked to downstream landowners who had culverts on their property that were restricting water flow on the outlet stream and also looked at removing vegetation to try and improve the water movement on the system and bring the water levels down. We have a, a harvester. We call it a swamp devil, actually, that kind of mulches it up and then we have a harvester that kind of picks it up and then you dispose of it elsewhere. We did six acres of plots that we removed vegetation and either reseeded or left unseeded. And the idea behind that was to see if, by removing the vegetation, the seed bank would come back. Basically, we're just monitoring the vegetation change and trying to see how much rice we're getting as a result of seeding. As far as success, I felt like seeing rice growing in our plots where we had seeded it this year was a success. Conservation and restoration isn't easy, so seeing small achievements is, is a big deal, and I think that helps encourage us to keep working on it. Even the landowners around the lake have come out and let us use their hose to wash off or let us access their property to get the canoes off. Just knowing that so many people care and have an interest and a stake in this lake being successful and that if you have a little gap in your knowledge or you have something that you're not sure you can accomplish, someone else will stand up and make sure it gets done. To have the chance to try to be involved or to play some small role in the restoration that's going on here is, is really a gift. You, you hate to see the rice in decline, but you feel fortunate to see all of these people who are working so hard to bring back what once existed here. For me personally, to be involved in the Spur Lake project is specifically for my father. So I'm 54 years old and I haven't ever been without wild rice. And a big part of that is because my dad always harvested. And just a few days ago, I was looking through some old photos and I was about three or four years old on this landing here at Rice Lake. The goal going forward is to have Spur Lake just like Rice Lake. We'll see the abundance that's here on Rice Lake out on Spur Lake and our people have uh, other options. Every restoration effort like this is also a teaching tool that hopefully you pick things up that you can bring to the next location and try to make the next challenge go by a little easier. And it would restore the ecological health of the system. There's ecological value here right now, but when it was a Rice Lake, it was another being in a real way. There's a tremendous diversity there that was supported by this plant. And, and a lot of that diversity is lost. And especially because every individual site like this, if there's 100 plus acres of rice here in a good year, that's actually sort of a measurable percentage of the state total. The threats that rice is facing have really grown substantial. Climate change being really the obvious one. So restoring rice here, it certainly has benefits and impacts that go beyond the boundaries of the state natural area. Manuman is a part of, of our story and a part of who we are, and it's a part of our identity. Therefore, it's a sacred being. It's not just food. In itself, it has a spirit, and we all believe that. My father's no longer here, and to be involved in this project, I just feel like he'd be really proud of me, you know, to try to keep whatever we can going to restore it, because I just know someday it's going to get there. And it'll be nice that by the time I leave this world that we can look back and see what we got to be involved in, and then my daughter and her children and the rest of the family, you know, the ones when I'm long gone, they'll be able to go there. It'll be a good day when that happens. <laughs>